Hello everybody! So in today's video, I wanted to do some AHK AI stuff, artificial intelligence. Now a lot of people hear artificial intelligence and they get a little overwhelmed just by hearing that. They think like, oh my god, it's going to be like this super advanced, crazy mathematical stuff, whatnot. But it really doesn't have to be. I mean, sure, you can have stuff like that. You know, Google search AI is pretty darn complicated, I'm sure. But for a lot of us, all we really need is something a little bit simple to make some decisions for us and spit out a result. So with AI, to be honest, all it is, for the most part, is just a bunch of if functions with inside of each other. Uh, you know, else's, then some other stuff I've talked about, but it's just a whole bunch of ifs. So I kind of want to show you a very basic, what could be considered an AI. And it's just a script that's going to make a decision for us. I'm um, kind of going with like a work approach here. Uh, it's just the best example I came up with. So let's go ahead and take a look at that code, shall we? So to start off, I'm just going to do this little setting up here, uh, which is just turning off the case sensitivity. I don't want to have to have people worrying about is everything capitalized correctly for what the script needs. It's not going to matter if a word that it's looking at is capitalized completely or just all lowercase. It's going to get the same result. So that just had, adds a little bit more user friendly to it. I then have my hotkey, which I already have that line highlighted here. I'm just using F1 like I always do. So I kind of broke this up into sections. Uh, so you'll see a comment here, grab info from email. So my goal here is I am i don't have an actual t um, Outlook program or anything like that. So I'm just using a text file as an example. And you can adapt it to whatever you need, whether you're using you know, Hotmail, Gmail, Outlook program, what have you. So the first thing I want to do is I want to clear out my clipboard. You don't have to do this line, it's just kind of a safety thing. That way if you accidentally push the F1, it's not going to really do anything. Um, so I'm just clearing out that clipboard just to be on the safe side. I then want to grab all that text and I want to spit it into the clipboard. And I'm just going to use the clipboard as my variable this time. You can always transfer it to another variable if you want to. It's really up to you. I'm okay with just using the clipboard by default. So that's just easy one. Send, control C, and that's what uh, mimics the keyboard copy. And that little control is just that up caret there. So send, control C. So now all that is in the clipboard. And let me show you what my example is here. Pull one of those up. So like I said, I'm just using a text editor for now. Obviously, you can have that into a actual email. So the first line we got here is who is it from? What's the subject? And then this is just the body of the email, let's say. Um, so this one just says, if you have some free time, can you fill this order? Amount 42, and here's my address. And if we look at the subject line, it's just saying, can I buy some oatmeal? And I have a second example. It's basically all the exact same thing. The only difference is, if I can move anything here, this person actually wants to order goats instead of oatmeal. And they live in Delaware. And my highlighting's not working there. They live in Delaware, where this guy lives in Kentucky. So this guy's ordering food in Kentucky. This guy wants to order some animals in Delaware. And you'll see why that's important here in a second. Well, the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure the person doesn't actually owe me money. Uh, I don't want to fulfill an order for them if they owe me money. So I got that here. And this just says, people that owe money, badman at testman.com and jackbean at test.com. So if these guys e email me, I don't want to fulfill their order. So I have that saved to a text file. It's going to, right here, it's going to actually... Um, find out the subject line or the from field and find out who that email address is. So what this is doing, it's taking the clipboard, it's getting the first line, 
and it's just turning that into its own variable. So all I'll have now in this variable is that, uh, you know, Tom at testman.com or whatever. It's then, uh, it's going to just kind of clean up the code there a little bit, string replace. These really depend on how you're saving that information. I just have it in a text file, uh, broken up line by line. So this is just getting rid of any, like, extra characters that might be involved. Um, and then it, what it does, it's going to read that file and store that data of all the people who owe money to me. And uh, that's just a simple file read. I've done a video going a little bit more in depth on that kind of stuff, uh, if you want to check that out to understand exactly how to set this up. Uh, the next thing I have is variable from equals variable from, so it's just repeating. The reason you do this sometimes is where you're putting a variable right back into the same variable it's at. It cleans out all like trailing spaces that might be there or any spaces that might be at the beginning. That way it just goes from character to character and it's not having any extra line breaks, spaces, what have you. So it's just kind of cleaning up the formatting for you. You don't always have to use that, but it's a, it's a good idea just to be on the safe side. Once again, it just makes stuff a little bit more user friendly for the people who are using your script. So now that we have all that data from, you know, who's that email from and who are all the people that owe me money, I want to check if one of those people is on the list. So it's getting that variable from, which is from the clipboard, that uh, from field. And it's just going to check, does that name exist anywhere in that file uh, variable that I used file read with? If it does, well, I'm going to get a message box right there just saying, this person owes money, do not take their order, and then a return. So it just stops. It's not going to do the rest of the stuff. It's just going to stop. It's going to give me a pop-up. Hey, cancel this guy's email, delete his email, whatever you want to do. Email him back saying, hey, bud, you owe us money. I can't fulfill this order until you want. And with that, you can even automate this more. You know, in here, you instead of a message box, you could even... I did an email on how to answer Outlook emails and stuff. You could have it auto-reply back to them. You know, that's perfectly okay. That's, you know, more whatever you're using it for depends on what you need to do here so you might have to play around a little bit instead of using a message box you might want to do something else now we get into the good stuff check what department this goes to uh, so basically what I'm saying is there's basically multiple departments there's a food department and an animal department in Delaware and Kentucky so I need to know where this order needs to go. So what that's going to do, it's going to say if clipboard contains oatmeal. That means it's for the food department. Then it's going to also say, well, which food department? The one in Kentucky or the one in Delaware? So inside this if, I have even more ifs. Once again, like I said, with AIs, it's just ifs inside of ifs. This one's pretty simple, but you can go pretty deep with these sometimes. I've done an AI that... I don't know, it was probably like 30 ifs deep or something crazy like that. It was, it was a lot. But it's pretty easy. Um, the next thing, okay, it's obviously for the food department since it's mentioning oatmeal. Now it's going to check if it's for Kentucky or Delaware. So it's going to do another if, clipboard contains. And there's that Kentucky right there, KY. There's the DE right there. Now you might notice I did add a built-in variable that AHK has a space followed by a space the reason I did that for both of them is in the email there could be a word that has DE in it like the word deliver that would accidentally throw this as being true because it did detect that there is a DE in there but I only want DE I don't want D to be like inside of a word or anything like that so I'm adding a space to the beginning of DE and a space at the end. Um, that way we just know we're getting it correctly. See, there's DE there, has a space in the end and a space in the front. Uh, trying to see if there's DE in here anywhere. But if I were to have like, you know, the word, please deliver to this address here, 
you know, that could definitely accidentally throw it off, even though that might have been meant for Kentucky. So that's a good idea to do with those. You know, be as accurate as possible so it's not accidentally reading the wrong word. Now on the opposite side, I have all the exact same code down here, but this time it's looking for goats. So this is clearly going to be for the animal department. And then once again, it's just doing another if, if, checking if it's for Kentucky or the Delaware Animal Department. All right. So let's go ahead and try that out so you can kind of see that in action a little bit better. Uh, let's go ahead and run that. All right. So I'm going to open up my first pretend email here. So this one is for oatmeal in the state of Kentucky. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight, push F1. This is for the Kentucky Food Department. Now, instead of a message box, once again, you know, you could have it so that it just automatically takes control of the email and just auto forwards to whatever the email address for this department in Kentucky would be. You can definitely do that. So wherever I have a message box in my code is really where you guys are going to be playing a lot with and adding more of your own functionality versus what I got. So let's try another one. This one's for goats in the state of Delaware. So we're going to go ahead, highlight that, F1. This is for the Delaware Animal Department. So this is a really cool way just you know, having the script make decisions for you, you know, I didn't even have to read all this. I can just highlight it. Boom, it gives me my answer. I'm not sitting here having to go, okay, this is for goats. Okay, this goes to Delaware. It was going to save you time, especially if you're doing a whole bunch. Um, another thing I've seen a lot of people use AI kind of functionality with uh, in the way I'm doing is with chatbots, uh, Discord, Skype, what have you. You can have it so it reads the last message that was sent to you. You know, if someone says hello, you can have your AI say if clipboard contains uh, any variation of hello, hi, what's up, sup, reply back, hello, and then just automatically push enter. So it can actually respond to some of the basic messages that maybe you just don't want to take the time to answer back, you know. Someone's just saying hello to you, and all you're saying hello back to them. It, it it can take up a few extra seconds of your time. Just have the script do it for you. Why not? So all I really did here was read the subject line and the state. Obviously, you can go into more depth with looking at you know how many do they want, all that kind of stuff. If if order is over fifty, decline order. You know we don't have that much stock. There's so much you can do with this stuff, but this is a pretty simple example. Um, the last thing I want to show you is the money owed thing. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add this person to our list of people who owe us money. Nope, there we go. So I just copied that in there. Let's go ahead and save that. I'm going to run it again. F1. And now I'm getting that pop up. This person owes money. Do not take order. So that's all I got for you on AI, at least for an intro to it. If you guys want me to expand on this, definitely let me know and kind of maybe what kind of path you want to take forward with this kind of video. There's so much you can do with AI from, you know, taking control of your computer to make decisions on what files to delete, answering chats for you, answering emails. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. But yeah, AIs, nothing to be scared of. They're just a whole bunch of ifs within ifs and then maybe some else's and then's and whatnot so yeah please subscribe let me know what you guys think about ai uh if you guys have ever used it i would love to hear how you used it and any tips and tricks you think that could help other people uh probably do a second video with this getting in a little bit more complex and really digging into those like really nitpicky ais that are really making some pretty detailed decisions, I guess you could say. All right. Thank you, guys. See ya.